I love sending Kim pictures because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so, <laughs> that I was What's up, y'all? Kim Whitley. Sherry Shepard. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day podcast. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Why look like you? Sherry, why look like you about to take a nap right now? Because I've been running all day. I just came from a Broadway show and I uh, had to rush home. Um, so... Because of us, from, you rush home. You ain't had to rush right. home. You could have texted Chris and said, look, I'm not going to make it. Y'all not going to kill me. Then you know, we wouldn't have a Mother's Day show. No, I would have been on there talking to the wall. I'd rather you get your rest. I you wish you would have told me that because then I would have not come. Right. That's what I'm saying. I told you about this. It's more important. You, your schedule is way more packed than mine and more demanding. Um... But I would tell you in a minute, I'd be like, girl, okay, because your health is. But you don't do that. So you you really, you're kind of telling a lie because you would never do that because you do, you say yes and do a lot of stuff and you'll be back broken. So this, 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 where's my eyelash? Why my eyelash look like it's coming off? Listen, listen, smart mouth. I'm trying to help you and look up at your health. You don't turn it around and say what I be doing. Okay, <laughs> that's what you're not gonna do. Happy Mother's Day, 18 Mother's years Day. of motherhood. Mm-hmm. I got 12 years under my belt and I'm ready to quit. Me too. It's- I just was screaming at this boy just three minutes ago. Like my nerves are so shot. What are you complaining about now? What did I do wrong now? Today, today, I wish everybody happy Mother Day. You ain't even gotta say happy Mother's Day to me because it's gonna fall off like water on oil. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Thank you, Chris. Are you doing anything special <laughs> you for see Mother's that? Day? Sherry didn't even. I told you, I said you ain't gotta say it. That's fair. Are you, so are you gonna do anything though for Mother's Day? Nope. Is Jeff? What are you doing for Mother's Day? Let's not talk about my Mother's Day. What are you doing for Mother's Day? Is Jeffy gonna take it easy? Okay. Damn. She beat down. She is a beat down mama right now. Um, completely broken. Yeah, yeah. You're pretty broken. I, I don't, I don't know if I like this. I like messing with you, but I don't know if I like this look. Um, what are you gonna do? For, what are you doing for Happy Mother's Day? You know, I have uh, no idea. I am in Vegas. You know, I got uh, two shows uh, left at Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's comedy club. Jimmy Kimmel's comedy Chris, is this live? What are we doing? Oh, this is pre-recorded. Uh, oh. So this is, this is the magic of recording the night before, whenever you two are full of energy, celebrating kicking off the fourth year it's been three years of two funny mamas and your wonderful fans have supported you so much and you're pouring into them by giving them this amazing kickoff to this <laughs> podcast well happy mother's this- day everybody for four years <laughs> and this will <laughs> air on mother's, mother's day air on mother's day well let me get my attitude together <gasps> happy mother's day everybody I think, happy mother's day. I think it's okay i think you all have shown the ups and the downs of motherhood, careers, relationships, and everything. And you, by God, if if you're making time to do it right now, then that's how it goes. It does. Yeah, um, I, yeah it's it's it's, it's going to be rough. Like Sherry is exhausted. People don't understand. We work. Um, they don't want to hear so, all that. They don't want to hear. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. But, they might care. They care. They work too. I was saying about mothers who are working mothers to right. to, to they to, don't say we say they they yes all of us work to support our children to make sure they are clothed and fed etc. And then we have to pour into them and take care of them. It's a trip. Had somebody told me that. 12 years ago, when they brought me that little four-day-old little baby, Joshua, I was like, look at the little baby. I got this. Let me tell you something. If somebody would have really sat me down, I might, it might have been a different conversation. I might have been like, 
Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. This the county? Yeah. Uh, somebody, y'all brought a little baby over here? Yeah, somebody told me uh, it, it's going to be rough. And I don't think my, I don't, I don't think I'm a, equipped for what these years are going to bring. I got to feed them, keep them alive. And you want me to teach him stuff, brush his teeth, be a good, the police don't shoot him, all that, right? Okay. All right. And he going to talk back? And, oh, he going to be disrespectful. Not appreciate none of it, huh? But there will be some, some moments of love, right? Yeah. Just like. You know, I got men that give me moments of love. So look here. Y'all can keep this. <laughs> I'll holla at y'all. Oh my gosh, that's so you said I got men that do that. Right. Oh my goodness. But I mean there are joys of motherhood that everyone they tell me about. Like I miss my son. Um I'll see him later on today, um, uh, coming from Vegas and um but then it's fleeting. Like my Joshua's gonna probably spend, you know, an hour with me, and he's gonna be like, "All right, bye," you know, whatever. You remember last Mother's Day? I think he dressed up in a black suit, and he served you like the honor and him put out tables with tablecloths outside, and he served you a meal like he was a waiter. You remember that? Yes, I do. And that was I really do. really cute. You know, I don't know what age they stopped at, but you know what would be good? I think you're right. I think I want him to cook me something and maybe pamper. I'm gonna let him do my toes. Give me a oh, pedicure. Nice. Just give him a file. Don't give him nothing sharp. <laughs> right. right. Uh, that might be interesting. He likes giving massages. I tell him to give me a good old shoulder massage. That's a really good one. I might tell Jeffrey to do that. You notice I might tell him. Tell him we went to see. We spent the day together, and my whole mood shift is just irritable. But so when you say what age did they stop being like the cute like? Uh huh. I think I lost Jeffrey at nine, <laughs> maybe eleven. Maybe eleven is when the body snatcher took over, and something sinister and moody took over my son. And so all day complaining. What, 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 how long is this gonna be? Why we gotta go? I don't want. Like I started out in the best mood because I wanted to spend time with my son and just everything. When are you gonna be done? Because I had to go rehearse. We got some double Dutch people coming on Monday, so I had to go kind of rehearse to make sure I could do it. He just don't want to talk to nobody. Don't just sitting up there on the phone. When are we gonna be done? Soon. Then we go, we want to go to a certain restaurant. So I'm trying to take him, but it's too much traffic. So we go to one that's similar, but they don't have what he want to eat. You know, teenagers are notoriously selfish. No, thank you, mom, for even taking me out for spending money on me. Look at the menu. This, this, this is him. They don't have it. Okay, can we get something to substitute? Jeffrey. I Meanwhile, I'm trying to, oh, look, they got this, they got that. I don't like it. Okay, well, they, you know, you'd be trying to keep smiling, but they got this. I don't like it. We eat, and I go, I'm about to just lose it. Then we, I said, we, I got a Broadway show. I don't like Broadway shows. You're going to like it. That's what you Oh, you're, you're going, going to like it. Oh, you're going to like it because I bought tickets. And we go to see Life of Pi, which, if you've seen the movie, it's about a little boy from India who a ship wrecks, kills his family, and he's in the water for 227 days with a Bengal tiger and how oh, he yes, survived. Yes, 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 I love that movie. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go, go, go. And it's really quite good. Like the play is just phenomenal. And he's like, you know, I, just, I, don't, like, I don't like Broadway shows. It's too long, my, my attention span, I'm not. And I was like, shut it, shut up. Shut, shut, shut it. it. Yeah, but I was like, shut up. Just shut up. I know, but you want, I swear to gosh, if you don't shut your mouth, I will <laughs> Please stop. Pop you this... in your bottom lip, snatch the top lip off, and if you got any teeth left, I'm going to knock them out. Shut your mouth. Oh, my God. I mean, 
before this play that I bought Did tickets. <laughs> was that in public? Yeah, it was in public. Oh, yeah, that oh. one. That's the one. It came out of my womb. That's the one. That was when I was happy. The body snatcher decided to take a break on that day. Gave me the sun back. You can take it down. You can take it down. Oh my God. She don't even want to see it. She's like, you need to take it down. Oh my God. So we get, we in the Uber. Why is it taking so long? Where is that? Okay. And then my ankles hurt. I don't know what I did to my foot, but my ankles, like, I'm excruciating pain. So I'm limping everywhere. Why is it taking so long? Why is it? I was just like, whew, happy Mother's Day to me with the teenager. Then the girlfriend, they having problems. Oh, that's why he's evil then. Oh my God. He did to be did he enjoy the play at the end of all of that? Did he was like, oh, okay. Did he say? He said it was okay. He said it was, it was good. That's what he said. It was good. It was okay. You know, it's hard to get layers out of boys. They don't really talk in colors and layers and, you know, they go, it's all right. It's good. Whatever. That's, that's really kind of his vocabulary. It's good. It's all right. Whatever. Get out of my room. That's pretty much what his vocabulary. What? Yeah, get out of my room. <laughs> Can you get out of my room? He does say that. Um, <laughs> wow. And then I got the text. Oh, you got to do the podcast. So we rushed and rushed and rushed it. And then he was in I the wish kitchen. you would have said something. No, no, he was in the kitchen. And I just lost it. I just started going off. And then I got it together. And I say, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Because I am wishing your Mother's Day is much happier than mine. Oh, in yeah, his you, room you, with the door you, shut. You. I'm in my room with the door shut. My air conditioner is broken. Couldn't figure out why I was so hot. So when you say, when do you lose him? Embrace every, every, everything. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, they, they say the days, uh, um, the days are long, but the years are short. And I do they believe are. that. They are. Like there's a time when they don't even want to hear how they came. Cause I, I was like, Jeffrey, you remember I took you to your first Broadway show? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I was gonna, I was gonna take Joshua to Vegas. Had it all planned. I thought he, you know. Yeah, I thought he was there with you. No, he cut a fool the day before. Started screaming in the kitchen and I, I, I did like this. I'm not you? a little demon scene. No. It, uh-huh. I know you said, who are you? You're right. I was like, what, what, who has jumped in your body and you being disrespectful? But he thought, you know, he thought mommy was going to be like, oh, it's okay, Joshua, let's go. And and I remember he cut a fool in Port of Art. I was like, I got to work this weekend. And I had all kind of stuff planned for you. could have gone zip lining. I had you a did. show. I everything. Look, I sent him a video and a picture of of the room and the view and all the stuff you could have been doing. I was like, see what you missed out on when it's consequences when you act a fool. I was done. Left him right at home, right in standards. It's so funny because now I understand like my parents, when they would say, I had stuff for you, but because you want to act a fool, you're not going to get it. And I never yep. like understood. Then I suck in my teeth and roll my eyes and start stomping and screaming. And my mother would have to hit me to get me back to my senses because I was so over dramatic. I just I cut up. Oh my! I, I feel so. When I get to heaven, I'm just gonna go before y'all let me in. Kid, you see if Laverne Shepherd is around anywhere? I just like to Wait. apologize. To her if I walk through the door. Just could you? Can we like? Is there a diner that me and Laverne could go to and just chill out for a minute, just so I can say I'm sorry? Are you afraid all- to see her? That's even funnier. No, I can't see her without apologizing and asking for forgiveness because wow. it has revisited me in the form of my son. Like, he's not as bad as me. I think if I had had a girl, oh, we'd be duking it out all the time. Wow. But it, wow. it takes me to when, like, my mother's very breath got on my nerves. <laughs> Everything my mother did. And I was so, like, rebellious and now i know why how it feels like when you start out in a great mood and your kids can just jerk it or make you mad cut a fool well and i remember you had so much stuff planned for joshua you was gonna do so much stuff with him and he don't even know 
what he has missed out on because he cut a fool. He cut, oh, shoot, but you don't even know what I did before that. So, I went and got some boxes and I got some suitcases <laughs> while he was at school. <laughs> and I took everything out of his room, all the toys, all the electric, anything and everything. It was like the Grinch stole Christmas. If there was a piece of paper on the floor, it was in the box, everything. I left him one pair of shoes. I left him three outfits. Five pair of underwear, three socks, a blanket, and a pillow. And that is it. Oh, and some books on the shelf. You dropped off at school? No, when he came home from school and he went upstairs. Huh? He went upstairs? And he was like, he knew, he knew, because he came downstairs. He wasn't like, oh, Mommy, where's all my stuff? He knew he had cut a fool because he came downstairs and didn't say nothing. He just had a little like smirk on his face, like, dang. Like, you know, I did like this. I said, uh-huh. I said, enjoy. I said, you better wash those clothes too. Good luck. Cause that's, I said, because you gotta remember, I supply all your needs. I mean, first Jesus, but then your mama. I said. <laughs> but as a representative for Jesus. <laughs> I'm a representative for Jesus, right? And you have disrespected this and feel like you should have all this stuff. I said, my only thing, the law, I said, the government said, all I got to do is feed you, clothe you and give you shelter. I said, that's it. And that's all I'm going to do and get you to school. Oh, Education. Man. That's scary. Yeah, because he's 12. Do you know what happens in a 12 year old? They turn into a 60 year, 16 year old who wanna hit you in the head with a bat and I'm not having it. Well, you know, somebody said, I think it was the late, oh, who played uh, Uncle Phil? He passed away. Um, oh, James Avery. It was the late James Avery. I remember he said to me one time, he played my dad on my show, Sherry, on the mm -hmm. sitcom. And I think I can look it up on YouTube. It's really funny. I played your friend. And yeah, I know. I mean, like my friend. So Devereaux, yeah, you played my nemesis. Um, it was so funny. And you can find Sherry on YouTube. Kim is on there. She's hysterical. Um, but he said, fear, kids' fear of you turns into respect as they get older. And there was another saying that I found. It was a rabbi. I followed this rabbi who's got all this practical wisdom, and I love him. And he said, Kim, he said, if you... If you raise your children, then you can spoil your grandchildren. But if you spoil your children, you will have to raise your grandchildren. And I thought that was deep. That was so deep that if you raise your kids, then they gonna go back and teach their kids. And then you can have all the fun you want with your grandkids. But if you don't raise your kids right, then those grandkids gonna run roughshod. So the one thing we got, you know, wow, I love that Joshua is so funny. Kids are different with the mothers because I think we are that safe space for them to test the, the, uh, what do you call it? Test the boundaries and test the limits because we love them unconditionally. So they know that we're not going anywhere as opposed to school. Cause when I go to school and get reports on the one that I, that I birthed that tore up my cooch, that made my boobs sag made my stomach hang over my panties, that one right there. Um, can I go to school? Another level of disrespect. <laughs> whole nother level. I look at my boobs sagging and I go, they was not sagging before I got pregnant. They were pretty. Up here, break my jaw. Because of him, they are. It's just stuff in my body. Probably my ankle hurting because I had to stand too long with him in my stomach. But when I'm school, <laughs> And these teachers talk about him. They're like, he's so helpful and he does this and he's the first one to raise his hand and he's just, he makes everybody laugh. I'd be like, who are you, what, who are you talking about? When are you going to do the report on my son? Right. And I'm like, nobody talking about Jeffrey. And I go, Jeffrey Aldean, Jeffrey Smith? Because I know you're not talking about Jeffrey Tarkley. So it's, at least I feel like, okay, well, 
what I'm pouring into him shows up somewhere. It shows up because I would say Joshua. When I look at Joshua, he's so bright. That boy is so daggone smart. He, he, he be the really only is. Joshua looks deep into your soul because he just stares at you and he assesses you. Now, right now, he assesses you to find out. No, no, that's not right now. Maybe a few years, he assesses you to find out if he can kick you and run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he figured that he out. Really no, he took off running. He's fast. Joshua's fast. He's, he's, a, he's so smart and he, he loves his mama and he's really he's a sweetheart. He really, really is. And so they like that with us because they know we're going to be there. That's why they say you could, you could, you could harm everybody. And who gonna be in that courtroom sitting right behind you? Your mama. Your mama. Your mama. Always. I, always. I look at I think about I think about Miss Robbie and how she went to court with her son. They still convicted him, but she was there. She did Miss Robbie from um Sweetie Pies. Sweetie Pies, yep. Doesn't and her son. Matter. Her son, oh my goodness, it was so terrible. Her son, and they had a, a reality show called Sweetie Pies, and Miss Robbie was the matriarch, and her son had already attempted. He had already been to prison for something, got out, yes. had an ex-wife and kid, and she was trying to help him. But this time around, he had his, I don't know, how we get on this for Mother's Allegedly, Day? allegedly. No, no, he, they proved that he did. He, it ain't no allegedly, Kim. Allegedly was before he we went to court and the verdict got read. Verdict got read, guilty of murder. He did. My buddy, my buddy was subpoenaed and had to be part of that. Oh, because he was really? one of the ones that, that knocked oh, him out. Oh, because in St. Louis, no, St. Louis. A, it's he it was here, and he was he re, he's uh, Miss Robbie's uh, record producer, and there was oh, something wow. that something crossed lines where they wondered if he'd been involved. It was not oh. that's not a fun thing to get called to because you could get caught up in some of that. Yeah, you can get caught up in that, and it gets way out of hand beyond your control. But it, there's no allegedly he had his nephew, yeah, get convicted. Miss Robbie's grandson killed, and. It, it was allegedly, but then they found out, yeah, it was a stripper involved. It was a, they lured him into some stuff and for the insurance money, what was it? $400,000? Yeah. It, was, it was something like that. And then also this is, this is the wildest part is, uh, the insurance person who did it had some tie in with Nelly and the, and the St. Lunatics, like St. Louis is so small. It was something out of a movie that if you would have connected all those dots, people would have been, the writer would have been like, no, no, that's that's too obvious. Like it was so St. Louis infused. It was wild. Wow. wow. And so, but, and, and but so, yeah, but go ahead. Who was standing? Who was sitting behind him? His mama. His mama. So it was all the way around the every trial. Yep. And that's what I want to scream at Jeffrey. You don't even know. I don't want to put that on her. But damn, I am there for you through thick and thin. Yeah, this little one you having a meltdown over. Um, and they said, if you ever watched, uh, is it the first forty eight or, or one yeah. of those? Um, and the, the 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 detective said, they get them in the room. They said after they confess or something, or they get them or something like that. They said they the first thing they all ask for. I want to call they, my mom. Yeah, want to call my mom. <laughs> That's what they say. They want to call their mama, and then they say they start apologizing to their mama. That's what they said is a trip. Shouldn't have done it then in the first place. But they were like, I got to call my mama. Mothers are something special. I do yeah. have to say they are, they are special. You, 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 you have to be so resilient. You have to take so much. And I give it up for every mother that even has more than one child. Because I look at mothers with three children and go, I take my hat off to you and my wig because I don't know how you do it. I don't know how I would do if I had two of Jeffrey's or a girl because well, I was pregnant with twins when I had Jeffrey and lost the little girl. So I go, what if I had to deal with two of these? Wait a minute. Wait, what did you just say? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I was pregnant with twins because I had done fertility. Oh. So they put, I have five eggs. I have five embryos, I should say, because eggs are not fertilized. I have five embryos. Four were boys and one was a girl. 
So I had them put in the girl embryo and the boy embryo, and they both took. I end up his sister losing his sister, but I think, oh my goodness. Wow. You know? Yeah, so so mothers are very, very wow. special. You gotta look, you know. You and I remember when you were adopting Joshua, it, it you know, you were so scared, you were so nervous, but it really we gotta focus on this stuff. It really changed your life. It adopting did Joshua. changed it did. your the trajectory of do, your career, your life. Do you now, I don't remember. know what you're gonna do? Do I remember what? Do you remember, I want to make sure you see me when I say this. Do you remember telling me to bond with Jess, Joshua and to breastfeed him? Yes. I said, even if nothing comes out. That's weird. And I didn't no, like it's not. it. No, and I tried it and it was uncomfortable. Weird. It's not weird because it's, it's, a, it's that physical bonding with you. Now, what you would be weird if big my titties man, are. Yes, I, I do know how big they are, and it, everything is sufficient. The baby was this big, and the titty was this big. It didn't. It, it don't didn't matter. Make, I couldn't breastfeed the baby, Sherry. Babies, they, just like it was not coming you know, out, Sherry. Sherry. It doesn't matter that anything was not coming out. First of all, he was not going to smother. It's the physical bond. It's just like if you throw a baby in a pool right now, the baby gonna float. It will not go First to the bottom. First of all, I want to make sure a disclaimer. No two funny mamas and Sherry Shepard is not suggesting throw a baby in the pool. First of all, let me say that. Go ahead, finish what you were saying. Jesus. Trained person with a trained person, and it's the same way. If you put your if you put your breast in their mouth, even if it's too big, you hold them in a football hold. They know how to lift up their their face to get uh, air and go back in the football hold. Babies, they've been swimming in water for how many months? Okay. Okay. Know. Now, what would be weird, Kim, is if you was with a man and something came out, milk just started. Spreading. That's weird. I, well, Chris would be like, "What in the, what in the Sandy's going on?" I Chris didn't say that. Go ahead, yeah. Chris. I was. What was that, Kim? Go ahead. What you were saying? Did you say Chris didn't say that? Like it happens. I yeah. Did. That's man. Best meal I'd had that month. Now that's weird. That's weird. It's not weird. It's not weird bonding with your child and you have no milk. It's a physical bonding because as they are suckling, they're looking into your eyes. Now what's going to happen? It ain't like it's going to go on long, Kim, because once they find out nothing coming out, they're going to be like, wah, wah, with the beat in front of it. Wait, this is the child? This is the child. Because yes. I was going to say, I was, remarkably, I was like, it was almost like you were there. I reacted the same way. <laughs> I was like, it's done? Well, baby will be you like, promised I three courses. <laughs> well, maybe that's what's wrong with the boy. Maybe I should have, because who this boy right here? Yeah, you should have popped your titty in his mouth. Okay. You sh Sherry, is that how you could tell when uh when Kim has a dude chasing her around? It's like, oh, she did the, the trick. <laughs> That's how she gets okay. dudes to do whatever she that. wants. Let me tell you how Kim just be popping these men in. <laughs> if, 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 the way Kim pop them in now, I can't even imagine what she was doing when she was young and she had stamina to run and to, to, to buy, buy, you know, run I up think... stairs. She just had the stamina. Kim don't have stamina now. But she popping them in. Let me tell you something. I sent her to my acupuncturist this oh, weekend because yeah. her arm was hurt. When you know she was in the hospital and she fell into a toilet. How that happened, I have no idea. I still think some fishy. I was at a hotel and fishy yeah. into the toilet. I share it. Keep dry. dig a little further. The truth because will come it's out. so fishy. What it sounds like, she hired somebody to come there and service her. They probably got into a little altercation and Kim fell into the she, toilet. Sherry, you, we know what happened. Plate. She, you know what happened, like Sherry. Chance, he tried. She tried to. Danger. She tried to change the price right. after it was over. Yeah, right? and, and it was a little struggle. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet. She tried or to save Chris. somebody, she hired, or she hired somebody for toilet play. But just her slipping, <laughs> putting on her makeup. I never in the history of a uh, man have I heard of somebody been in a hotel room putting on their makeup, turn around and fall into the toilet. 
I just have never heard it. So I know that there's more than what Kim is telling us. But, but you know, I do think that she fell into the toilet. Just not how she said she right. fell into the toilet. I you know, put on my eyelashes and put on my makeup. I turned around and I fell into the toilet. I had to go to my urgent care. My shoulder still hurts. My shoulder still hurts. And I need to come back to New York. Oh. So there's this acupuncturist who studies Chinese me- medicine as well. I went to him yesterday because yeah. it was hurt again. And, you need to uh, look at your he, ankle. He put his go fingers ahead. in my mouth, huh? He need to look at Where's your he? ankle, but go ahead. Yeah, I do. But he put his fingers in my mouth. He was like, I don't even have, because he said my jaw was clenched, me and Kim. And he puts his fingers, two fingers back there in our mouth, and he just pulls and pushes. And, and oh my yes. gosh, it just hurts. But then hurts. You, you can feel your head 360 after he finishes. Yeah. Because he shows you what stress does to your body. So he did that. He was like, I don't even have to push hard. He said, he said, I have an amazing uh, capacity for healing. I was like, oh, wow. Because I do, I heal from relationships pretty quickly. I do. He didn't say, but, that. Um, he didn't say that to me. No. Well, the, oh, that's why, what I was saying. So anyway, my acupuncturist meets Kim one time and he says to me, as he is hugging me, you know, when they hug you to kind of jerk that back, he did. He was like, I'm so in love with Kim. I go, what? What? <laughs> As he's like trying to get my neck, he's like, I just, I'm just, I'm in love with Kim. I was like, you know, as he's cracking my neck and I go, you in love with Kim. You only met her one time. He's like, it's just something about her. She just makes me happy. And I was like, oh, you done messed up my whole acupuncturist Chinese medicine relationship. If I got to hear about this, this is about me. Okay. This whole 45 minutes is about me. Not but him. he knows that we, he knows we love each other. He was talking about you when he I said was we there. connected. We connected, Doctor Todd. I was like, you gotta I love be Doctor Todd. He's he's the best. He really is good. But you know what? It's so interesting. Let's since we were we can transition and we're talking about motherhood and yes. mothers. You know, I want to yes. bring up. I would love uh, Chris help me out here. I want people to go and watch this movie uh, for Mother's Day uh, weekend. A thousand and one. There it is. A thousand and one. Uh, produced by Lena Waithe. Uh, this movie right here uh, stars Tiana Taylor, uh, William uh, C- Catlett, and uh, you can watch it on Amazon, Apple TV, YouTube, Google Play. But watch the movie. It was directed by uh, A. B. Rockwell. I guess I'm saying it right. That's A. B. Lena- Rockwell in the white suit with the black turtleneck. That's A. B. Rockwell. Oh, wow. There we go. A woman director. Fantastic. Lena, Lena Waithe produced it. And, well, you know, Tiana Taylor, but it's it's about an apologetic, uh, um, unapologetic and free-spirited Inez uh, kidnaps her six-year-old son, Terry, from the foster care system. They set out to reclaim their sense of home, identity, and stability in a, a rapidly changing New York City. There it is, a thousand and one. I love Tiana Taylor. Um, it has won awards. Uh, I believe Ina was talking about this on your show, Sherry. Um, so just make sure y'all go out and, uh, well, not even go out mm-hmm. at your home, uh, watch this uh, stream Mother it. and Son. Stream it. Yeah, stream it. It's um, really, I, I, re- I really recommend seeing this movie. It's such a good movie because Tiana Taylor, Tiana Taylor, she ate this role. It's a woman who just is going through it, who was in the foster care system. Uh-huh. Everybody, they were, that's when they were over at uh, Sundance. That's all of us, Lena and A.V. and Tiana? And Tiana, can you take that? They look like you, a singing group. I love that picture. It's so funny, <laughs> the puffer jackets. Um, but they, they uh, she's just a roundaway girl in the foster system. She gets out, she's trying to make a decent living. She don't want to go back to what she did and then her son was in foster care. So she literally, she kidnaps her son because they're not going to give her son to her. And they begin a whole new life in New York. And it's also running concurrently is the changing scene of New York. You know, how it was, uh, it became gentrified from the hip hop to oh. the, so it's, it's like the soundtrack is amazing. But Tiana, how she's doing the best she can with the limited resources. But a lot of times, you know, also with the limited skills that she has, she, she gives it to him the only way she knows how. And it's really, really good. So I would say definitely stream this on the weekend when you're sitting there, like on weeknights when you don't, you know, you're just like, oh, 
I don't have anything to do. I'm tired. Sit on the couch and watch it. It's really good. Can I tell you something about Lena Waithe? Though? A thousand and one. And one thousand and one. Really? Yeah. Good morning. A thousand and one. Awesome. Make sure y'all stream. I know you, now you know Lena watch our podcast. You know that. Lena right? watches our podcast. But this is the funniest story, Kim. So Lena comes on the show. I'm so excited to see Lena. And it's two story. Before the guests come on, I always go upstairs to say hi to them. So we connect. They sometimes guests are nervous. They don't know what they're gonna get. And I will leave them a handwritten card. I have these cards that say Sherry, and I'll leave a handwritten card in their dressing room before they even get there. And so, so I did that uh, for Lena. And then Lena came down and sat on the couch. She's great. Now, I my questions are on the prompter. So I got to look at them really quickly and then say mm -hmm. it. I don't, I don't want to be staring at a prompter. So I just kind of grab what I can and then regurgitate it so we so I can really connect with the with the guests. And if there's any follow-up stuff, I'll ask. So I saw on the prompter, had the screening at the world famous. That's all I saw. So I said they had at the Magic Johnson, but I thought it was a world famous Apollo. So I the one thing you gotta commit to what you're saying. So I say to Lena, Oh my God, and this is congratulations, because what did it feel like to have the, your premiere of 1001 at the world famous Apollo Theater? Girl! And, you know, Lena, your friend, she's like, Sherry, you always, that's the thing about you, you always be getting stuff wrong, just getting it wrong. <laughs> well, she said, I thought you was like, uh oh, what did I say wrong? I was. I was sitting on the couch, like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And I was like, and, and she goes, you always get stuff wrong. We didn't have it. And you know, Lena's all chill. She's like, we didn't have it at the Apollo. We had it at the Magic Johnson Theaters. And so I'm trying to save face. I go, what? You did. You didn't say it like that. Please tell me you didn't jump up like that. I did. Because I figured if I could show enough like shock and outrage, it won't be as bad. She was like, yeah. And I was like, for real? <laughs> And I tell you, that's Lena for you. And so she, um, she's on my she's card. Funny. She's on my card. And Edie, my sister, told me she opened it. She's like, oh, she left your card. Oh, look at Sherry. That's so cute. <laughs> like, y'all know, oh like, Lena, Lena is a friend and we of, about the, of you. the podcast. Look at her. Yes. And we that's, talked that's about you, girl. Kim. We gave you, we gave you at least twenty to twenty-five airplay seconds, and that's a lot. To talk about somebody on a talk show. I think I appreciate. Yeah, we sure did because no. I said if we don't hit this. Kim gonna be mad, and she said, "I know." You know, I'm just gonna say both of y'all. Nobody mentioned my name. You know, I'd have been hot as fish grease. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, a thousand and one. It's a re It's really, really good. It's in, and, and it's got a. I a thousand and shocker, one. And I, and I love Tiana Taylor, so I know I want to watch it. T when I tell you Tiana Taylor scared the mess out of me, she was so good. And it's funny because Tiana yeah. Taylor is from, I believe she's from the Bronx or Brooklyn. I can't remember. Tiana Taylor also has a really great, if you listen to, uh, uh, look her up on YouTube, Angie Martinez's podcast. Tiana was on there. It was so good because oh, I Kim, she's so talented. And uh, she's the one that sings, how you gonna know if you're gonna love me, love me. It's so, it's like a real kind of jazzy R&B. It's so freaking good. And it doesn't sound That's nothing like so, that. But Tiana Taylor started as a, a singer dancer. or an actress, a dancer. She was, choreo she was a dancer. She, and she was choreo choreograph choreography, chore she was a choreographer. For a lot of people, Beyonce was one of them. She did. She did ring the alarm. She did. The, you remember the video? Uh, Beyonce's ring the alarm. That was Tiana yes. Taylor's um, choreography. And so Beyonce wanted to represent Tiana, but she had already signed a deal with Pharrell's company, and she was with Pharrell's company for almost, gosh, from maybe eight to ten years, and she felt he didn't protect her. And he didn't fight enough for her. So she got a really, you know, it's hard being a musician because you're trying to read contracts. It's it's worse than being an actor. And you get into these contracts that you cannot get out of. And she felt that he didn't push her album or nothing. So she had to stay there for 10 years, a whole decade. And then wow. she went with uh, she went with uh, another company that didn't really, it didn't really do it for her. Oh, excuse me. 
Uh So she did this one album and it's got a beautiful song. uh, You're going to love me. You got to listen to it. And she said she was not confused. She was what? She said she wasn't going to do music. She got soured in, in the music industry. But okay. through that, so she, she was a choreographer, choreographer. Where she could sing. Okay. Yeah, she can sing. And she was doing some acting, but she's an amazing. She got, and I don't know if you remember the video she did of her chiseled body in the shower on the couch. She got a lot of publicity from that video, but nobody had a strategy for how she could capitalize on it. So she was just kind of stuck in a record deal. They didn't really okay. promote the record that came out and it was very good. So that's just another, if you want to know more about Tiana Taylor, it was so, so yes. good. And it's on uh, Angie Martinez's podcast and then the thousand one, the movie. So her acting, the pain that she had, I saw where it came from. Like she was able to pull up emotions as this mother who just like was trying to make it and 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 do something for this to her son. Really raw. So go see it, y'all. <laughs> Yes, please. Prime, YouTube, uh, just pull it up a thousand. Is it on Brown Sugar app, um, like your show, at your age? Yeah. Is it on the Brown Sugar app? The Brown Sugar app? It could be because at your age is on the Brown Sugar app. Uh, let me see. Let me see. A thousand and one is on. on. I got my, uh, you know who I got? Uh, I got it from Chris. Chris actually sent me where it is. Uh, streaming, but it's on Google Play, YouTube, Apple TV, Amazon Prime. So it could be on the Brown Sugar app because that's part of Amazon Prime. I've seen that. Tiana Taylor and William Catley. Okay. A.B. Rockwell. Huh? A.B. Rockwell is amazing too. She's so, she's so, she's so that's, that's just good to know. Um, what we forget? We have to publicize. We're going on the road next week. Oh, shoot. Right. May right, 19th. Exactly. 20th and 21st, Kim and I are in New Brunswick, New Jersey on May 19th. On May 20th, we're in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania uh, at the Excite Center at Parks Casino. Uh, Again, May 19th, we're at the State Theater in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And May 21st, we're at the Grand Grand Opera House in Wilmington, Delaware. So but you can your- get your tickets at cherryshowtv.com. Yeah, you can. So we would love it if you guys would come and show up. And then we also and are at... Go on, oh, excuse me. And if you go on cherryshowtv.com, you'll see where else, because then we go to Colleen, Texas after that. We're in Colleen, Texas, mm-hmm. June 2nd and June 3rd. Two days. June 2nd and June 3rd. And... uh. I'm supposed to, can I take, can we, and Kim and I have been doing an incredible amount of promotion for these shows. I have hit a wall. I don't know about you, Kim. I li- I've hit a wall in promoting, but I, I did Andy Cohen's yeah. podcast. I was so upset because the reason why we do the promotions is to promote our- You, you got on there and forgot? No, I, didn't, I never forget. He never said I, anything. I we were supposed to, you forgot. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. I'd be like, uh-oh. I forgot. Well, because it's so funny. They want to talk to you about um, your myriad of projects. And you just, and the time goes by, six minutes goes by really fast. Yes. You're telling jokes. You want people to know you're funny. They want to ask about your the projects you're doing. And you're like, oh, shoot. I didn't say I was doing stand-up. Because that kind of, for Kim and I, falls down at the bottom of what we do. But we love stand-up. Right. He was supposed to, I was supposed to do 25 minutes with Andy. I ended up doing 10 because he was running late to be on The View. So I didn't know that. So I kind of timed my stuff. If I know I got a 25 minute right. block, I know I don't I know I don't need to come out and promote right away. I, let me tell a couple funny stories or be funny. And then I say, come to our stand up tour. So because we only did 10, he was like, Sherry, it's so great to talk to you. And I was like, hey, hey, wait, wait. But they didn't already muted me. So all you they see already is, you up. Hey. like I'm panicking because I'm like, Andy Cohen reaches so many people with this podcast and and he's he's like bye 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 you don't hear me and I'm like no no my comedy my comedy wait hold on and he was like bye girl I was like you got to be kidding me I did not I know him all the good stuff I told him a story about Joy Behar she don't keep no secrets I'm like and if I get in trouble for that one 
Oh my Damn. god! And and you didn't get a chance to promote the show. And I, mean, I didn't we, get a we're chance. Do, we're doing good in ticket sales, but we could, you know, we want to sell out. People can't get in. Yeah, we could, yeah we need some people can't get in. That's what we need. So I didn't get. I, I failed us on that end with, with Andy Cohen. I really did. That was not a good one. But I did. I did three newspaper interviews in Philly. So. Oh, I think okay. That, okay. I think, I think we'll be okay. Uh, I just, and that's it. And uh, who's some, um, where, we want to send a shout out to. Where is this? We want to send I a shout out to, to Jimmy Fox. Can we? Yeah, yes. Yes. I was trying to find something that I wanted to share. Go ahead. But Jamie Fox, uh, we are still praying for him. We don't know what's going on. They say he's fine. Then I'm going to go ahead and believe him that he's fine. Um, I hope that he is playing pickleball and running around and, and doing well. Um, this is a tough one with Jamie yes, Foxx. It two sides of this. It's like they want privacy and a family should be entitled to their privacy. Absolutely. It's none of our business what what's going on, you know. But so many people, you love Jamie Foxx. You've grown up with Jamie Foxx. You've seen Jamie when he was doing Sheila. You wreck, I'm ready to go on In Living Color, on the Jamie Foxx show, any given Sunday, all mm -hmm. of his best is daughter, Corinne. So I knew that girl when she was baby practice. Baby. Little. Um, and so it's hard because, you know, Corinne said we had to take Jamie to the hospital because of a medical emergency. We would appreciate your prayer. And everybody got down with it. They were praying, 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 praying. But they still want to know because they love Jamie so much. Is there an update? And so I think that there was like a statement on Jamie's page that said, I'm doing good, I'm doing fine. But, you know, some some folks were getting mad at people because they felt like it's none of our business. But it's a little bit of a different line when you got somebody when you come into people's homes all the time, your show is running, the Jamie Foxx show is running in 300 countries in different yeah. languages. People care. There's a lot of people like uh, somebody, and I'm not going to name any names. Some of the journalists put out stuff because they wanted to be the first to get the clickbaits and the first to get the followers. And it was pretty right. crappy because they put out um, that, you know, everybody was at his deathbed and just waiting for the worst. And that's pretty crappy to put that out. Because they may, if that had been true, they say that it's not, and I'm going with whatever the family says. But had that have been true, you're putting it out. They may not have told their family yet. They may not. They may have been close friends that didn't know. Who who wants to find that out on the internet? Like it was right. crappy, yeah. and the people who put it out first, you know who you are. It was horrible. Because then what that did was that caused the commotion. Damn near broke the internet. That's how much people care about Jamie. Oh, and so uh -huh. I mean, you, you can't get mad at the fans because when you ask for prayer, because I know when people ask me for prayer, I'm right. on it. But the follow-up is I want to know, did my prayer work? <laughs> I mean, right. this, you got a testimony for me? That's just natural. And I, don't, I think for uh, the majority of people have good motives because they care about Jamie. It's a love thing. And so many yes. people have been praying. And then when you get... When you get other IG posts from his close friends going, y'all got to pray for Jamie. You got there's a sense of urgency that yes. people went into overdrive and in praying. So I think, you know, put putting out the statement that he's doing great. He's been recuperating for weeks. He's even playing pickleball. That's awesome. But I think people who love Jamie and are we are we owed a picture or video of Jamie? Absolutely, we are not. But I think that don't don't say all fans you know that they're being nosy or just like it's just they're really concerned and sometimes we just go you know how people say i just need to see him i just need to see him right that's what it is i think it's a lot of love and it's a lot of confusion especially when you have so many we want to see the miracle and the testimony of our prayers so i think right. have a little have a little grace for people who are saying gosh because as celebrities when we put stuff out here on the internet People do feel like they're owed something, you know. I don't. I. I, I it's hard when well, you're always I mean, especially yeah, since you've been a public figure sorry, for so long. Sorry. You are public. You're a public figure, so people want to know publicly: Are you doing okay? They want to know publicly. Are you doing okay? 
And it, it's, you know, and I blame if there's some folks in the media who are just putting out stuff. Sources told me, everybody gather around. Think to yourself, is this something that the family would want out? And then you, because of the backlash, you erase it. Then five minutes later, you put what Corinne has said, that he's playing pickleball now. Which is it? You're trying to be the first. Sometimes Which is it? Like, yeah, because you just went out today, was gathered around. The, so you just, you just trying to get clicks. And like, I don't like that. No. Be considerate that maybe other people have not been informed yet. And it's a horrible way to to you know for somebody to find out something like that so i just say you know with this media y'all gotta stop but the fans i know kim when i went to jamaica i ain't been on the jamie fox show in so long but do you know every time i go to the jamaican mark this is what they say oh my god that's the sheila from the jamie fox show sheila what you want girl it's and i go i ain't been on that show I since Yes. But they remember. And I had a small, a small role. I might have been on there six times. That's it. But they remember Sheila from the Jamie Fox show. Those are people who they love Jamie. Yeah. Even yeah. us, Kim. Remember what when I was we was talking and Jamie was like he wanted to produce our podcast. He loved he said um that he was on his way to the airport. Kim. Yes. Jamie said he sat in the car and almost missed his flight because he didn't want to stop listening to Two Funny Mamas. Oh, which Jamie. that was such a and he was like, can we do something? Can we? And I remember saying to Kim, I, the, the number I got for Jamie, he kept he be changing his number. So I didn't even have the current one. <laughs> and you was like, well, I got this number. Let's see if this works. But you know, Jamie's one of the ones he always got to change his number because once they get out to the wrong person and they get out to more wrong people, you got to change it. <laughs> My number never get out to the wrong people. I wish it would, but it don't. Mine either. Never, ever, ever. Nobody um, has ever called it. I'm like, wait a minute, who is this? But I just think, have a little, don't get mad at everybody who says, we just want to see a picture of them because this is a hard thing. Every time I hear something crazy about Jay, uh, Jamie, I got to just sit there. And especially you, Kim, because you just lost your best friend. David A. Arnold. And this is another comedy brother. And we and Kim and I, we know Jamie from back in the day. So way back. Way back. We got many, 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 many memories of Jamie with his crazy self. And so even when we hear stuff, we call on everybody. Everybody's been very, very tight lipped. This this is very tight lipped. This is like garden, the doggone, the treasury. You, you you can't find out. And we've called everybody. And it's not to put anything out, his business. It's just because we just want to know, is everything okay? And I think yeah. that's how fans are feeling too, because Jamie has affected, when you affect somebody's heart the way Jamie has, they just want to know. They just want to see something, so uh, evidence of the, A the little prayer. Something, something. A little something, something. So, you know, the family, we respect them and we and we only go by what the family says. That's it. That's yes. all we do. That is what Corinne is saying. And I, I do hope that Jamie is playing pickleball. I hope he is uh, recuperating. We praying for miracles for him because he's got a lot more to give. Yeah. Yes. Corinne like, I is even in imagine. Child, no. Jamie, and it's hard. No, just like they just, no. Like he's so vibrant. And, yes, um, Jamie gonna be fine. I can't take it. I remember Jamie came on Tom Joyner one time. Kim is when I was doing it from New York, and, uh, and he came and uh, they asked him. I think it was Civil Wilkes. You know what kind of woman did Jamie like? And he was like, Yeah, you know, like 40, 41. And I remember I said during the commercial break, I was like, You got to be kidding me. I was like, Jamie, I see a stomach under your sweater. What are you talking about? You like a 40, 41 year old? I'm your age. He was like, but, but I'm not trying to get your age. And I was like, oh, you're making me so mad. <laughs> wow. And we went back and forth. It, and, and it's nothing but love. I said it, it's a loving story um, with Jamie. But he was always that one that I found, Kim. And I'm not speaking to him in the past. It was just a past experience. But Jamie was always that one. He could be around all of the big wigs, his agents, movie producers. And if he saw you, 
he will walk across the floor and grab your hand. And you felt like, okay, you not you didn't change. And so that is definitely him. And Jamie's at and he was always <laughs> silly. Always, always silly. And uh so we just continue to pray for our comedy brother and pray that if he's doing pickleball, he is scoring high and and laughing and having a good time. So whatever the family puts out, I'm gonna I'm gonna mind my business. Right just until the good news comes. And I'm waiting. So we can see his face until whatever news they put out. It's just all we call to do is pray. Every time we don't need to know what's going on, you know, you don't we don't need to know the I think it's just natural curiosity of people because Jamie is so vibrant. So when you say medical emergency, people are like, not Jamie, fi-. like what? What could possibly be right. happening to Jamie? This, you know, because he is, it's just like if something happened to one of us, people will, want, I, I believe our fans will want to know, God forbid, what happened? That's why we yeah. can't go with this, I fell into the toilet story. Because we like, that is nothing Kim would do. We saw her put her foot into the camera, not even three days ago. So how is she falling into the toilet and checking right. her arm? Really? And, we, and, and the other story that you told, remember, but it was true, when you were at the plant shop, I don't know what they call a plant shop, a um, mm-hmm. florist, whatever. The, and it was a whole new brand. And you tripped and you fell, busted up your face real bad. But you went into detail and we were okay. And you showed us a picture of which you really didn't have to do. Your face was right, busted up. You know, right, but there's, you know, you got to control your own narrative. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, and then TMZ did get a hold of it later, but I made sure, but they used my tape. So that you're right. You know, that was another thing I was going to say with the, with uh, Jamie's family that probably would have helped, but everything happened so fast is somebody coming in there coordinating what the official statement is going to be. Because right. here it is, when you're in the public eye, just tweeting it is, you 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 definitely need a crisis control person, a publicist, but you know, Corinne is his daughter. Maybe she didn't realize, didn't know everything was happening so fast. Because when you put out your official statement, you do control the narrative because everybody will pull, all of the media will pull from that statement and won't yeah. pay attention to it. So. Uh, it happened with our uh, Nisian when she divorced her husband Jay. Oh right. She put out the official statement. So because otherwise, when you don't put out an official statement, everybody takes their own through their filter and and starts speculating. And then you got a lot of. When I got divorced from uh, my second husband, one A, I put out an official statement. So a lot of times that helps too. But neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. You know, she said what she said, and we will just continue to pray. And that was right. And said good visualizations. I still don't believe you fell in the toilet. But no, yeah, I should. I did fall in the toilet. Um, was there anything uh, else? I got to take a nap before the show. Oh, you do. We have to get out because you have a show. Completely. I have two shows, but I want to make sure we covered everything that we're supposed to cover, and because it is our. Fourth anniversary. We are going. This is. We are starting our fourth year as two funny mamas. This is marks our anniversary every Mother's Day. I cannot believe I have not killed Cherry Shepherd. You, and I want to say thank you because uh, Kim was my special guest at the City Winery in New York City. Thank you. That's what I was doing. Th- Girl, I was trying to pull up that damn review. I had it up and then I put it down. I, so I, we, I literally. Damn it. Uh, I flew Kim in to be my special guest for 15 minutes. I had already sold it out, but to have her do 15 minutes. And we ended up doing 95 minutes on stage together. No break, no nothing. 95 minutes. And what I'd like to tell people is that that, and now I can't find it. Um, the the review that, I just had it up. I was waiting. Um, we got a review from Broadway World. They said that we burned up the stage. That's it was cool. the cutest and best uh, written review, and it started with, it said, uh, Sherry Shepard goes off book and off the rails with her bestie, Kim Whitney, and together they burned down the house at City Winery, and that was on, if you want to read the whole review, it's at broadwayworld.com. And, and it's it a was, really good review. Oh, it's such a good review. Look at it. Yes. That is we, it. And the, the, 
right Robert the guy the writer was fantastic. What was the boy's name that opened up for you? Because that's what the Jordan. whole article was like. I know, I know. I sent it to him. I said, tell us, man, what your name is. Because the guy couldn't figure out our opener. His name, his name was like Jordan Campbell, something like that. Or, or was it Carlos Jordan? I can't, girl, I can't even remember. Um, but oh. it was such a great set. Kim stayed on stage with me for 95 minutes. And we just said, and I don't know anybody, any comedic duo who does that much time. And we did it. And so if you get tickets uh, May 19th through 21st, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, Wilmington, Delaware, Colleen, Texas. That is what you will see us do. And it was hysterical because we just, unscripted, we just talk about life. Like somebody said, what do y'all talk about? And I said, we'll have a set list, but we, we just go off the rails. It depends on what happens. And we just talk about it. But we've been together oh, I tried so to leave long. the stage two or three times. You ain't let me leave the stage. No. You're telling you, you are really quite a liar. You tried to leave the stage five or six times. Okay. And I kept going, where I are the you bathroom, going? And I told you I had to use the bathroom. You can't hold it for 95 minutes? I can't hold it for five minutes. Are you kidding me? That is, for, I don't even think about going to the bathroom when I'm on stage because I'm in a zone. So I don't even know how you have to go to the bathroom. Because you know what? When you got ADHD, there's a lot of things you're thinking about, Sherry. When I tell you we're in the middle of talking and Kim would just turn around and try to walk off the stage. And I go, where are you going? Where are you going? And she come back, creeping on back with the little creeping walk she do. She don't want to be here creeping back. That's a creep walk. Oh my God. I it got the tape for really you. Oh good, I want the tape. It was I got really, tape really, really good. So if you got a chance to come see us, please go to SherryShowTV.com to see where all our dates are and, and to get tickets, please. And send it to your family in those areas. So we have to, Michael Bolton came on the show. He gave me a t-shirt, Michael Bolton. Oh, I, oh, I love that. Is his, hair still, is his hair still long? Not at all, girl. This is in our heyday. Uh, anyway, oh, okay. we got to be respectful of your time because you have to do two shows tonight. Praise yes. the Lord. Uh, Jimmy comment. If you're in Vegas or you know somebody in Vegas, tell them to come get a ticket at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club to see Kim Whitley. It's tonight. Oh. Two shows tonight. She's very no, funny. No, got... y'all. When this airs, it will be over. Okay. Oh, so, so then you'll be seeing Linnell if you go to buy tickets. You'll see it'll be and Hope Flood. Yeah. You're. Uh... I'll be forgetting. We so many lives. I'll be forgetting. So. Don't worry about it. But you can call Jimmy Kimmel again and say, I miss Kim Whitley. Can you have her back? All right. And it's Facts. easy. It's an hour where like Kim can get back. So we do want to let her take a nap because it's, it's draining doing two shows. So. It's draining. Uh, your openers for the City Winery show were Rolanda R- 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 Watts and Jordan Carlos. Jordan Carlos. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jordan Carlos. That's it. And shout out. So again. The, Chris, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Hey, congrats. Happy Mother's Day and uh, way to kick off a fourth year, ladies. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. You've been a part of it. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us on Two Funny Mamas. Please make sure you watch Sherry Shepard's show every day and uh, make sure you go to SherryShow.com to see where we are doing our comedy stand-up tour and get the tickets. Get the tickets. All right, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. A Renee here from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, by way of Birmingham. Um, one of my favorite episodes is actually Forrest Company. It was Siobhan, Andre, Chris, Sherry, and Kim. And Kim kind of popped on. And they didn't know that she was gonna come on, or y'all didn't know she was gonna come on. And she was twerking and acting a fool and laid on that bed and was like, they can't hear me. Can y'all hear me? And Sherry lost it. That one of my favorites. I have a lot, but that's a good one. Hi, two funny mamas. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Kim. Hi, Chris. Uh, my name is Anton. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. So hello. Uh, my favorite episode has got to be that one where Sherry was talking about wolves in her backyard. Like when she was walking her dog, Lexi, and then she'll be hearing this, wolves. And it turns out that she was referring to coyotes, so that episode really cracked me up. 
Hey, Kim and Sherry and the rest of the crew. This is Nicole from Washington State. And just wanted to say congratulations on three years. I have been here since the beginning. I'm a single mom of a 13-year-old son that I am constantly advocating for at school. So Two Funny Mamas is like my getaway, my like peace through the week. I curl up on the couch or in the bed and turn Two Funny Mamas on. If it's the new episode is already, I've already watched it. I just turn on a um, another one. My One of my favorites is the four hour episode when Kim left and went to a meeting and came back and Sherry and uh, C. Mickey were still on the live. And she was like, what are y'all talking about for four hours? But one thing that will forever go down in history of Two Funny Mamas as the funniest, and I rewatched this so many times is this. You think Dad wants to visualize anything on me? Uh, no. No, I mean, yeah. but, but that's why I want to get Dad breakfast. No. We did not get Dad breakfast. What time is it? Five o'clock. Oh, Lord, we ain't fed my father. We got him breakfast. Jesus. You got it? Oh, Lord. Daddy, we got him. Daddy! Daddy! Oh my goodness, this will forever be the funniest of all. But I just want to say congratulations and thank you for taking the videos. Have a good one. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.